It's Saturday, March 30th, 2024. It's been raining on and off all day today. We were actually going to go down to the beach, down to uh, Laguna Beach today, but uh, everybody said don't come down. It's cloudy, it's raining, so we just figured we stay up here in the desert and deal with the rain here, but it's okay. Still a nice day. Looks like we're going to have some more rain coming in, but uh, Please make sure to like, share, subscribe. Let's get into this video today. I hope everybody's doing really good. Um, I want to start uh, with this first article. Uh, Civil War filmmaker Alex Garland. In the U.S. and the U.K., there's lots to be very concerned about. Now, this movie, we talked about this uh, a while back. Uh, it's going to open April 12th. I never go to movies. I'm going to check this movie out. Now, I don't know if, what kind of message is going to be in this movie. They're saying it's very neutral, that really you have to come to, uh, come to your own conclusion with this movie, that they stay very, very neutral. Uh, so it should be very, very interesting. Uh, it says here that uh, Alex Garland began working on this movie around 2018, observing the world and feeling surprised there wasn't more civil obedience back then. Since those years, a lot has happened. He says there's a lot to be worried about, and I agree 100%. I don't know his beliefs. I don't really care. Uh, I'm going to judge this movie the way I see it. Uh, I think it's going to be an interesting movie to tell you the truth. So I am going to uh, take a chance and see this movie. But it's interesting. Why is this movie coming out now? Is there more to it? It always seems like these movies come out before they happen in real life. And so this will be very, very interesting. Uh, but he is, uh, Alex Garland is exactly right. There is a lot to be worried about. And I hope that all of you are worried right now because if you are, you're taking action and you're making sure that your families are protected financially, physically, spiritually. So make sure uh, that we are taking a note here because again, it's very, very interesting that a movie like this is now coming out. Is this a, a premonition to things to come? Because I'll tell you, I've never seen society breaking down like this and it's breaking down at an accelerating level. I cannot believe the grotesque crimes that we are witnessing on a daily basis right here in America. You would think that these things maybe would happen in some third world country far, far away, but these crimes are happening now right here in America. The hedge today, the Tower of Saran can't pay its debt. Brooklyn's tallest building is in foreclosure. It says here, while everyone uh, says the looming Commercial real estate crash is nothing to worry about since nothing's happened yet. So since nothing's happened yet, there's nothing to worry about, except for the whole regional bank crisis last March, which virtually anyone uh, who is not JP Morgan almost imploded. Every day we get a new and more shocking foreclosure or default. Isn't that the truth? Every day we're seeing these massive buildings defaulting, being foreclosed, going up for sale, and they're bringing in maybe 50% of what's owed on them. Some, some of these buildings have only gotten 10 cents on the dollar. Well, today it's Brooklyn Tower, the 1,066 foot building, sometimes called Eye of Saran. Uh, this is, again, the tallest building in Brooklyn. Silverstein Capital Partners has scheduled a foreclosure auction for nine DeKalb Avenue, this building. $424 million mortgage on this property. Uh, good luck at the auction. Uh, it's going to be very, very interesting to see uh, what this building brings in. I don't know what the complete construction cost of this building was. It's a beautiful building, but it's going to be very, very interesting to see what it brings in because uh, from what I could tell, there's $424 million owed on this building right now. This is what uh, Silverstein uh, paid for this building. Uh, I believe back in 2018. So will it bring in what is owed? Probably not. Probably not. But why we're not seeing more news on what's happening in commercial real estate? And as somebody wrote me weeks ago, uh, it's not a it's not a commercial real estate collapse. It is a real it is a commercial real estate apocalypse, and that's exactly what it is. We are watching an apocalypse, and to think that we're not going to see more banks go out of business with what's happening. To commercial real estate, uh, that makes no sense whatsoever. Of course, we're going to see more banks go out of business. How many of these regional banks are, are highly tied to these commercial loans? And as I reported just a few days ago, some of the bigger banks 
have more on their balance sheet in commercial real estate than we're, we were first told. So some of the big banks uh, are going to be at very, very high risk now of eating this. And we could see we could see some of the bigger banks tumble. Uh, I think most banks in this country, if not all, are in very, very big trouble. Another article today from Breitbart. It'll take at least a decade and $2 billion to rebuild the bridge. Uh, that Baltimore Bridge, the Francis uh, Scott Key Bridge, uh, just a few days ago, uh, a handful of people lost their lives. It is causing a major shipping disruption. They don't know all the cars that are imported that come to that port, they don't know where they're gonna put all these cars. They don't know how long people are gonna be out of work. All the longshoremen. Uh, how about all the businesses that may, and that may be connected uh, to all, all, all of the port there that rely on that port being open? Could be restaurants, uh, could be uh, retailers, could be you know coffee shops. Uh, how many businesses rely on that port being open this is a this is a giant mess, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think it's getting enough attention, but uh, it is going to take two billion dollars and at least a decade just to rebuild the bridge. They're going to have to clean this mess up, and now uh, all these chemicals that have uh, uh, been poured into the water, uh, containers uh, that are in the water. We still have missing people and vehicles in the water. This is a, a mess, and again, as we enter this this Easter weekend. Uh, all glory to God and, and Jesus Christ for rising. Um, let's make sure to uh, say a prayer for these families. Let's say a prayer for all the homeless people. Let's say a prayer for all the abused animals. Let's say a prayer for the people out there that don't have it as good as you and I. You may be living in a garage. You may be sleeping in your mom's basement. You may be sleeping on your friend's couch. It doesn't matter. You have a place. You have friends. You have family. You're alive today. You're eating today. You're watching this video on your $1,000 phone or your $1,000 computer. You are blessed. You may not be at the zip code you want to be at right now. You may not be driving the car you want to drive right now, but maybe one day you will. H work hard. Don't give up and you'll get what you want. But right now, don't take for granted what you have. It's another day of life. And we should right now be helping other people who need help, who, who have less than we do. If, uh, you know, if you've been very, very blessed I hope you're giving back a little bit. I truly believe when we help people that need it, we're going to be we're going to be blessed, and that is just doing the right thing. Um, I, I think it's a sin that if we're being success, su successful, if we have some success, if we have the means, why are we not giving back a little bit? Stop giving all your money to the corrupted churches. Maybe go out there and help out some animal shelters some homeless shelters, maybe go out there and drop off uh, you know, a box or a bag of food to some people that may need it. Maybe drop off some dog food to the animals out there living on the streets that need it. You, you know, it's easy sometimes, and nothing wrong, writing a check and, and helping somebody. I've done that and, and I think that's wonderful. But I'll tell you what, nothing feels better than when you physically go out there yourself and help people. And remember, God's watching. Here's another one from The Hedge. The meltdown of commercial real estate. Bloomberg is warming, warning that defaults in commercial real estate loans could topple hundreds of U.S. banks. So without those pre-bailouts, researchers at Stanford and Columbia estimate that 1,619 U.S. banks, about one-third of our U.S. banks, could be at risk of failure. Everything seems to be dependent on the money printing. Everything seems dependent on the government. Nothing is operating on its own. The stock market is so dependent on the Fed. It's so dependent on quantitative easing and money printing. Uh, it's not operating on its own. Nothing is as it seems. Nothing is operating on its own. You know, think about it. Is the stock market going up because everybody's making money at their job, or that, that we're seeing all these incredible jobs and that, you know, the Typical middle class family is just booming and everybody is doing incredible. Wages are going up and people are saving more money and making more money. No, it has nothing to do with it. The stock market is going up because of all of the manipulation, because of the quantitative easing, the Fed buying stocks, the Fed buying bonds, and of course the hope, the hope that the Fed is going to cut rates. How long can this go on? I don't think it can go on much longer. Does that mean it's another five years? I don't know, another one year, another one week? I have no idea. But I think we're getting close to something really, really big happening. And I think that we're going to see major, major collapses um, across uh, the sector, stock market, bonds, housing, 
commercial real estate, you name it, it's going to collapse. Be ready. FDIC. Now, you know, so many people are so uninformed and believe that their money is safe in the banks. And they'll be like, oh, if something happens, you know, it's FDIC insured. This is really interesting. And if you get a, a minute, check out this article that, that I'm, I'm reading to you right now, the meltdown of commercial real estate from the hedge. Do your own homework. The FDIC has 20 trillion dollars in US deposits, okay, in the bank. There's just a hundred billion dollars insuring that 20 trillion dollars. That is a half a penny for every dollar out there. So if you think your money is safe, you're wrong. Again, there is 20 trillion dollars in US deposits in our banks right now with only a hundred billion dollars insuring that money. You really think your money is safe. I mean, I, I really wish people would take a few minutes and do a little research, a little due diligence. And if they did, I think they'd be a lot more concerned about the safety uh, of their money and their future. Here's one from the Daily Mail. Downtown LA slammed as third world as shocking video shows homeless camped, camped out on trash covered sidewalks after setting fire in middle of the road with Elon Musk summing up eyesore in one word. Wow. I've been down there many, many times. Uh, it's always shocking. You never, it, you never get used to it. Uh, the problem is it's getting worse. And Wherever you're at, Culver City, Santa Monica, we got some really reckless golfers here today, but um, whether you're at Santa Monica, Culver City, Beverly Hills, um, it, 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 across the board, there's tents everywhere, homeless everywhere, graffiti everywhere, the gangs are running rampant, the crime is out of control, you're not safe anywhere uh, in Los Angeles now, it is, it is a major eyesore. And LA County added another 10,000 homeless people just this year to their statistics. Yet the Hollywood elites love to tell us, and they're so outspoken uh, about people living in other countries and the third world conditions and how bad people have it in other countries. Yet in their own backyard, they stay silent about this epidemic of homelessness right in their own backyard. And, you know, Going to Skid Row many, many times, Skid Row is only seven miles away from Beverly Hills. And yet yeah. these elites want to tell you how bad the rest of the world has it when it's getting so bad right here. How can they ignore this? I mean, you can go into parts of Beverly Hills, Culver City, and there are tents down, uh, all, down uh, Sunset Boulevard, you go to Hollywood Boulevard, it, that's another world. Uh, Hollywood Boulevard in Hollywood is just another world. But you go down... Uh, Sunset Boulevard, which used to be so beautiful, uh, beautiful Culver City. Uh, it, it's just a complete cesspool right now. And what is so alarming, and I was just talking to a friend of mine in Louisiana today, and uh, hopefully we're going to visit him in a couple months. Uh, he breeds some very, very beautiful dogs, some very incredible guard dogs. And uh, hopefully we'll be visiting him in a couple months down there uh, on his uh, property in Louisiana. Um, but we were talking today, uh, you know, uh, about what's happening in this country and how it is becoming so third world and the crime epidemic that we're seeing and the importance of, you know, maybe owning, you know, a, a dog like he breeds. But um, just absolutely uh, shocking uh, the conditions that are going on right now and, and people being silent that live in these conditions now, but they live behind the gates, they live behind the walls. And so they, uh, they don't say anything. But once they, they leave their property, once they leave those gates, they're passing the graffiti, they're passing the tents, they're passing the homelessness, they're, they're passing the decaying infrastructure, they're, de they're, they're passing by the crime, the gangs. You name it, the, the vacant buildings, the stores that have closed, the restaurants that have closed. Why are people not speaking out with what is happening in their own neighborhoods? It is absolutely shocking. Come on, Hollywood. Wake up, Hollywood. Where are you, Hollywood? Hollywood, you're not going to exist. You're not going to last much longer uh, if you don't start speaking up with what's going on. We know it's a cesspool. We know what's going on with Diddy. We know uh, everything that's going on in Hollywood. It is, it is Satan's playground, no doubt. But if you do not speak up and stand up now, uh, the whole thing, it, it, it's going to fall.
And maybe it should fall. Maybe it's about time Hollywood does fall. And at the, by the looks of it, it looks like it is happening. So stay silent. Uh, let Hollywood fall. It needs to fall. Fe female homelessness has increased 55%. Why in the world is this country that we call the greatest nation on earth now very, very arguably the greatest country on earth? Look, I love America. I would die for this country. I certainly would not die for this government, but I would die for this country. Uh, I feel blessed to be here. I feel blessed to be born here. Um, and I, I literally could cry with what I'm watching take place to this country, what is happening to it and how fast it is falling. Um, but why... Do we have women living on the streets of America? Homeless women. That number has increased 55%. 90% of these women have been assaulted. This is America. I mean, there are third world countries that, are, that don't have these type of numbers. LA has a budget of $609 million to deal with homelessness, and it's getting worse. Where's the money going? What in the world is going on? Where's the accountability? Where is Hollywood? Why are they not asking questions? Where are they? Is Hollywood that demonic, that satanic, that it just ignores women living on the streets, vets living on the streets, people being assaulted, the whole city just falling, store, stores closing up, people going out of business? I, I mean, you're going to Hollywood. You're going down with the ship because you couldn't stand up because you sold out to the devil. How sad. Walgreens to cut. $1 billion this year. How are they going to do it? They're going to do it with layoffs. They're going to close more stores. And yet we're being told that the economy is doing well. I said this years ago when people said, no, things are fine. You, you know, it, it's not that bad. And I said this many, many times. This is a death by a thousand cuts, ladies and gentlemen. Death by a thousand cuts. There is no denying the collapse happening right before our very eyes. Look at the insurance industry. It's like you have the insurance industry collapsing. Insurance companies are leaving this state. They may be leaving your state. They're leaving a bunch of states. There is an insurance collapse taking place. You're watching, we've watched multiple trains fly off the tracks, derailments. Uh, what was it, a year, maybe two years ago, when basically the train in Los Angeles uh, basically was hijacked. They, they derailed it and then robbed the entire train. There was stuff everywhere. It took days to clean up the mess. They were going on these trains, taking off all the packages, purposely derailed, uh, just a modern day bank robbery. Food plants, how many food plants have burned to the ground? Hundreds or is it more than that? I don't even know. I can't even keep up with the numbers, ladies and gentlemen. We got ships now hitting bridges. Um, which closed a, a, a major port here. Uh, the homeless epidemic getting worse. More stores are closing, more restaurants closing. The vacancies pile up. Commercial real estate is now an apocalypse. It's not even a collapse, it's, it's an apocalypse. 34 plus trillion dollars in debt. Crime surging, it goes on. We got wars uh, busting out everywhere now. Uh, we got people from all over the world coming here, committing massive crimes. We're giving people $5,000 debit cards. Uh, we got vets living on the streets. We got poor people in the city of Chicago, New York, Los Angeles, every major city across America. And we're helping out people who aren't even from here. Look, I don't want to see anybody suffer from wherever they're from. I love all people. I want all people to have a long, healthy, successful life. I don't want to see anybody starve. But at the end of the day, I have to, I've got to look out for my own country, America. I got to look out for American homeless people. I, we got to look out for homeless women. We got to look out for the poor in Chicago, the poor in New York, the, the poor in LA, the poor in Baltimore, the poor in Indiana, the poor in Michigan, the poor in Utah. We got to be looking out for our own people. We can't save the world, ladies and gentlemen. What's going to happen is they're going to take us all down. Like we, we are going to be so inundated and so broke that you're, you are right now turning America into a third world country. And when America is a third world country, it will no longer be able to help anybody. We will just be another third world country. The rich at the very, very top and the rest of us at the very, very bottom, poor as can be. We cannot keep bankrupting ourselves. Again, 
I don't want to see anybody hurt. I don't want to see anybody starve. I, I, I want people to live free. That doesn't matter where you're from. But you cannot come here and just depend on the American people to, to take care of you because it is bankrupting the typical American. It is bankrupting America. The, the, the infrastructure here in America cannot support all these people, the hospitals, the health system, the insurance companies. Uh, you cannot turn schools into refugee camps. You cannot turn police stations into hotels. That's what is happening. And it is absolutely disgusting. It's embarrassing uh, what is happening. And people, uh, Americans, are paying a severe price here financially. They're paying a physical price. There could be uh, a health crisis that could break out. But we cannot afford to do this in any shape or form. I'm going to leave it there today. God bless every one of you. Have an incredible Easter. It's not, you know, just about Easter bunnies and eggs. It is about Jesus Christ who rose from the dead, who paid a price for our sins. Let's remember that. Give all glory to God. And thank God that we have another day of life, that uh, we're, we're awake, we're preparing, and we're aware of what is going on. Take action, ladies and gentlemen. You have a duty to protect yourself and your family. Make sure you're doing it. Have a great weekend. Uh, as always, I look forward to, to speaking with each and every one of you. Like, share, subscribe. God bless.